Minas, you believe that consciousness is really fundamental in reality, and uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays, I think the same, Wednesdays <laughs> and Thursdays, I'm not so sure. But how do you relate consciousness to the cosmos? Did, did consciousness cause the cosmos? Are, are the two elements uh, operating in parallel? Does the consciousness cause the cosmos? That's the question. The answer would be the consciousness is the cosmos. It causes the cosmos. In the same way that the mind and the body are interrelated. You can't have a mind without a body. You can't have a body without a mind. So, taking this analogy, the universe or the cosmos, it will be like the body of the consciousness. And the consciousness is what drives the whole thing. Our mind drives our body. So you have the cosmos and consciousness being the same thing. It's not that consciousness is causing the cosmos. They're the dual aspects. They're the complementary aspects. But in a fundamental way, the universe can go away and consciousness is still there. Okay, but the, the consciousness cannot go away and the universe can still be there. No, because then it would be a dead universe. And if it, such a universe exists, as perhaps some people say in the multiverse, it's an irrelevant universe as far as I'm concerned. The nature of consciousness is such that most neuroscientists say it's a product of the brain, and the brain is an accident of evolution, uh, and consciousness is therefore something wonderful that we enjoy, but it's really an accident that appears on planet Earth during this period of time. And it is a belief system. I have to say that that viewpoint that you just very profoundly put together, uh, is, which is belief system of neuroscience, it's a belief system. There's actually no way of proving that a priori and in a self-consistent way. It is a viewpoint. Now, the reason that I don't prescribe to it is because we know that the mind is not localized in the brain. If you open the brain, you don't find a particular location that says, mind is right here. It's not. It's non-local. To use a simple analogy, it is a saying that, well, if you open the TV and you look at the integrated circuit, you're going to find the CNN program that you're watching that evening or whatever your favorite program is. No, that program is somewhere else. It is like the software versus the hardware. Just because you understand the hardware, it doesn't mean you understand the software. The hardware of a computer can support many different softwares, but it's not causing the software. Okay, let's get back to your fundamental point that consciousness is fundamental. I want to understand how that consciousness that you think is fundamental relates to the physical cosmos. You say they're the, that they are the expressions of the same thing, but that the universe cannot exist without the consciousness, yet the consciousness can exist without the universe. So that means they're not the same thing. The universe can exist um, only because consciousness is the underlying reality. Okay. okay? Now, this particular universe could go away. When we say the universe, this particular universe that we happily live in and, and live our lives, etc., etc., can go away. Consciousness will still be there it will create or give rise to other universes. But could consciousness, in your way of thinking about it, exist by itself even without a universe? Any universe? So let's bring it back to an individual person. The question that you're asking at the cosmic level, I would turn it around and say, can you exist? Can the mind exist in a state without thoughts? And the answer is yes. We have some deep states in meditation or altered states, et cetera, et cetera, where the mind, as we experience in everyday life, stops or slows down. But consciousness is still there. Why is yes. it still there? Because we remember. We come out of it and say, oh, yeah, I had a good experience. I had a deep experience. So there's something there, even when the mind slows down in terms of thoughts. So that analogy would say the universe can go away, the objects, the universe being the objects, can go away, mm. but the awareness is still there. Consciousness is still there. And so at its ultimate causation, 
if did consciousness start by itself and then have a universe that emerged from it? Consciousness is there outside of space and time. Okay. So we live say, in space and time. We live in space and time. So how, Our bodies live in space and time. How did we go from one to the other? How do we live, go from one to the other? Because we have aspects of us which are outside of space and time. We can contemplate being outside of space and time. Just because we can contemplate, that means actually part of us is outside of space and time. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Because we can contemplate, it yes. means we are? It means that the mind I is... can contemplate that I'm a mermaid. That doesn't uh, make me a mermaid. In, no, it doesn't make in terms of this particular physical <laughs> body, but... A certain part of you, in the mind, in your mind, you are a mermaid, if you want to go so, that path. Uh, in an abstract particular sense. Yeah, in an abstract sense. So the mind states are much more numerous than the physical states. Okay, fair, fair enough. I agree with that. So in that sense, you can, consciousness can give rise to many, many different realities. And this particular reality we live in, it just happens to be one of them. It actually tells us, turn around the question of quantum theory being relevant. It, turns, it tells us a lot about consciousness. I'm having trouble differentiating between consciousness and the universe in your understanding being expressions of the same thing. And that consciousness is at a deeper level, so in some sense, Consciousness underlies and causes the universe or the physical world as we know it. Consciousness, if it is the cause of the universe, it must mean that you could have consciousness awareness without objects. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. That's what I mean. And you can. Yes. And therefore... Can the you have objects without the consciousness? No. Okay. Well, so, if, they so do, you, if they do exist, that would be a very strange universe well, outside of our experience. Uh, okay, but, well, I mean, prior to human beings or sentient animals being around, there was a universe with no consciousness. Well, now you're referring to human consciousness. Or any, an animal consciousness. In a devoid, universe devoid of life, there's no consciousness. A universe devoid of life at all possible times and all different distances, I would say is irrelevant. It's an irrelevant universe. Now, how this particular consciousness that we call the human consciousness arose, yes, evolution is involved. However, because of the non-local aspects of quantum theory, mm. which is the foundation of the, of the cosmos, that consciousness must have been there from the get go. Uh, because you have non locality in time as well as, as in space. As in space. I see. Then there is not you the beginning a, you, and the end. You got a lot of tricks to play. Uh, yes, <laughs> they're all quantum tricks. <laughs> the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, are actually interrelated. You, can don't, you can't say that, well, this came and then this came. You, one point of view, yes. But because of complementarity, because of non locality. So if you have consciousness now, you've had consciousness forever. You have consciousness saying. now, you had it forever, but not the particular Robert Eminas consciousness that we are interacting with mm. or through which we are interacting. That is a product of evolution, a product of perhaps accidents and being here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But something was underlying there from the very beginning, from the very get-go. In fact, there was no beginning in this view. The beginning. It's part of consciousness. Because consciousness was always there. Always there. Okay. So d does that mean, very simplistically, that consciousness caused the cosmos? In that sense, consciousness causes the cosmos because it exists even without the cosmos. You may say, can it exist without any cosmos? That's an impossible question. I cannot answer that. It appears to us that the consciousness gives rise, perhaps, to innumerable cosmos or universes innumerable. And we happen to be in just one of them where we experience so-called reality the way we experience. 